act with justice. We are called to love tenderly. We are called to serve one another. Catherine's coming upstairs, I'd share a couple things. Um, one of the great things that's happening in the midst of all of this is we're having a lot of baptisms, but they're not taking place in worship because the families are wanting to have smaller gatherings. And so we had a baptism yesterday that was originally scheduled when the weekend I got exposed, so we had to reschedule the baptism. So um, Lane Locke was baptized yesterday. That would be... Um, 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 Kayleen Haslam Locke and Cody Locke's um, son. And we have another one next su Sunday afternoon, and we've got another one in November. So in about a seven-week time period, we're going to have five baptisms. That's a good celebration. Catherine. I was just sitting downstairs enjoying the music. <laughs> oh. Good morning, everyone. All right, so right now... Enough for 88. Woohoo! All right, and then we have Sunday school classes are being held by Zoom at 11 a.m. If you're interested or know someone that's interrupted, just ask for the Zoom link and I'll share that. Also, we have high school and young adults um, have a book study at, by Zoom at 11:45, and we are. Only on our second chapter, so it's not too late to join. And each chapter is actually like its own story. So if you can participate one Sunday and not another, it's one of those kind of books. So super fun. Um, you can Confirmation is delayed still. Okay, good to know. I didn't even have anything because I knew you would have information on that. Um, you and family have our... 2021 calendars for sale for $5 each in the Narthex. And thank you for supporting us. Quilt raffle tickets are for sale for a dollar each or $5 for six. The Spaghetti Supper Committee is raising money for the Bureau County Food Pantry and there will be a drawing 
for that quilt on November 1st. Also, Sunday, October 25th is Reformation Sunday um, to allow for social distancing and to allow for families of our three confirmants to be in the sanctuary. We encourage our members to sit in the fellowship hall on that special day. Also, you are encouraged to wear red on that day. And then I just saw, and it, and it reminded me, um, LOMC is having a run, bike, walk, however you want to transport yourself um, on November 1st just to raise money because they've been really hurt, hurting with all this COVID stuff. So um, I know if you need more information, there's a little flyer and some spots around church. And that's it. Thank you, guys. Catherine, I invite you to stand for the baptismal remembrance. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water in the word, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, uh, verses 1 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Prep lands formed of old, faithful and sure, for you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The pal palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like the heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged rinds stained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is shed over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for, for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The psalm today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for my joy and crown, stand, fa- stand firm in the Lord this, in this way, my beloved. I lo- urge Euodia and I urge Syntheth to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companions, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement, and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worth praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. I invite you to stand for the Holy Gospel as it's found in the 22nd chapter of Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen." The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and then I invite Sandy to come up front for a children's sermon, and, and assuming we have some children downstairs, we'll, they'll see by video. And If not, you're all children of God, right? Good morning. All right. All right, boys and girls. I know there's some of you downstairs, too. 
How many of you have ever been invited to a party or had a party and where you were invited others to attend? Well, did you ever receive or send an invitation to that party? Like, here, I have one. It's a party. You're invited. Parties are so fun. What do you think the best part of a party is? I know, for me, it's when they blow out the candles, and then we all get a piece of cake. I love cake. And, you know, I think everybody likes cake, or at least the ice cream. Well, Jesus told a story about a party. In his story, he compared the party to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said that a king, he was having a party for his son. The invitations were sent out to some very important people. This was to be the best party ever. It would have all the cake and ice cream you want to eat. There would be party gifts for everyone who attended. The strange thing, though, was all those people that were invited, they refused to come. Can you imagine passing up a party like that with all the cake and ice cream that you could have? Well, that's what happened. Since all who were invited, they refused to come, well, the king, he sent out more invitations. He sent them out to everyone on the street. He sent them to young people, to old people, to poor people, to sick people. Everyone who wasn't invited to the first party, first time, were invited this time. The king didn't even know some of the people who received invitations. But these people were happy to come to the party. Now, I want to tell you who this story is about. Well, it's about God, who was the king, who sent the invitations. And the party was for his son, Jesus. The people who didn't attend the party are those who chose not to follow Jesus. The people who came to the party, they're the faithful followers of Jesus. Jesus tells something very important in this story. He says that everyone is invited to become part of God's heavenly kingdom. There's one requirement to enter the kingdom, and that's to have faith in Jesus. When we have faith, we are invited to enter God's kingdom. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. Dear God, We thank you so much for inviting us to be part of your heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Jesus tells a parable of a father wanting to fill the wedding reception with guests for his son. I guess one should not jump to conclusions too quickly. You would think the close friends and even acquaintances would have attended. Yet the father ends up having to send his servants into the streets to fill the wedding reception with people, both good and bad. Who would have thought then that the father who was a king has the nerve to toss out one of those guests who does not meet his standard of dress? You you never know, before, during, and even after a wedding banquet, what might transpire. I've been to enough weddings. (laughs) I guess when it comes to weddings and even marriages, one should not jump to conclusions too quickly. I guess that would even include the following story about a famous marriage. A magazine article a few years ago discussed the marriage of former presidential nominee and Kansas Senator Bob Dole and his wife Elizabeth Dole, 
who was formerly President Ronald Reagan's Secretary of Transportation, President George H.W. Bush's Secretary of Labor, a North Carolina senator, and also a presidential candidate. This news article appeared in the mid-1970s before Elizabeth had really become a pro very prominent political figure. The spread contained a photo of then Senator Bob helping his wife Elizabeth make their bed. One incensed male reader wrote Bob an irate letter complaining that he should never allow such a picture to be taken of a man doing such things around the house. Senator Bob Dole says, I wrote him back. Buddy, you don't know the half of it. The only reason she was helping me was because the photographer was there. Today, those two retired senators are still grateful for their 45 years together, and they still talk about that article. They both really focus on each other rather than their individual needs and personal wants. They say that's what makes their marriage work so well. When they first met, he was a Republican, and she at that time was a Democrat. Yet, they looked at each other with mutual respect. Hmm. And they end up getting married. When you see a married couple, I guess one should never jump too quickly to conclusions. That would also be true about this story about Chuck and Jill Galloway. The story began when Chuck and Jill were in their 50s. They no longer owned the house. They had sold their modest home to help fund their newest adventure. They also now were both unemployed. They packed all their belongings into a U-Haul. With their two teenage sons, they left their native western North Dakota and traveled to eastern Iowa. They realized it might be a few years before they would again have a steady paycheck and something other than temporary housing. Over the next five years, they would move five times with a less than normal income. To top everything, they also faced some pretty serious health concerns during those five years. Chuck had a heart attack and cardiac surgery. Jill fought and won a battle with cancer all in that same time period. Yet the Galloways kept faith and in pursuit of that future they still had in sight, they found themselves, kind of unbeknownst to them, that they were going to have to do this, leaving eastern Iowa in one of their five moves. They were headed to Nebraska this time. The year was 1998. Once they arrived, Jill was going to have to find employment. Chuck knew that he would earn a paycheck after they arrived, and even though for that year he knew he was going to earn less than $11,000 for the whole year, the future they still held to be in sight was what was motivating them. So on a tight budget, they avoided motel expenses, and they drove almost nonstop. And then they had a flat tire in their U-Haul. So when they arrived in the next town late in the afternoon in, in Nebraska, they pulled into a parking lot a block away from a Lutheran church. Chuck was tired. Clothes were dirty from changing the tire. Face was unshaven, and he... He definitely needed a shower. And his hair? Well, on top, he had a few long strands of hair to cover a, a, a balding spot. So often, um, it looked windblown, hanging in his eyes when he stepped inside from a, a breezy day. Sometimes he twitched when he talked. He looked like a seedy stranger one would normally not greet. So he walked down the street into the church office. 
The pastor was not there because the pastor was making an unexpected hospital visit, but the office secretary and the congregation's president and several other members were in the building talking with each other. They were waiting for their new intern to arrive. Chuck said hello, shaking the hands of everyone. Then he let out his, the spiel roll off his tongue to those good Lutherans standing there. Chuck said to them, I, 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 I know you all must be fine Christians, so I was wondering if you could help me. I have almost no money. My family's in the parking lot down the street. We just pulled into your town. We're, we're all hungry. We've not had anything to eat since breakfast, and it's almost supper time. We've been driving across the country looking for a new town to call home. We're almost out of gas. And we had a flat tire. We slept in our vehicles at a rest stop last night. And we could really use a place to take a shower and sleep tonight. So being the fine Christians you, you all must be, would you be so kind to give my family some assistance? I would be very grateful. <laughs> By the time Chuck finished his spiel, some of those good Lutherans had silently slithered off into the next room. Those who were still listening were all looking at the floor. There was a long, long silence. Chuck stood there looking at them, waiting for a reply. Finally, the congregation president spoke. Well, the pastor's not here right now, and I'm not sure what we could do for you. Chuck still stood there in silence. After a few awkward moments, Chuck asked, Isn't there something all of you could do even though the pastor's not here? I thought Lutheran members usually took an active part in leadership and, and congregational decisions. Oh, we do on some issues, the, the, came the reply from the congregation president. But we're all going to be very busy in a few minutes. We're just all waiting here for our new intern. That, that is a student pastor from seminary. His family is supposed to arrive from Dubuque, Iowa, so that we can move them into a parsonage. Great, announced Chuck. I knew you could help me. I'm Chuck Galloway. I'm your new intern. My family in the U-Haul are down the street in the parking lot. <laughs> that is a true story. Sometime if you want a good laugh, you'd ask about Chuck going to the hospital when he's having a heart attack. I won't share it in this, in this pulpit here. <laughs> One should not jump to conclusions too quickly. Despite how he put them on the spot in their first meeting, those Lutherans grew to love Chuck, and Chuck helped them grow in faith. Chuck today is a pastor who, even though he's retired, still pushes people to live out their discipleship in a truly Christian manner, kind of like how Miles sung in our opening song. Chalk understands the mission of the church to be filled, is to fill the wedding banquet in heaven. To go into the streets to welcome both the good and the bad, and even the stranger who does not look like they would be worthy by some human standards. That is the lesson he taught the people of a congregation in Nebraska the first day he arrived as their new intern looking like a drifter. Chuck brought to life the words of Jesus' parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. Those who had been invited to the wedding banquet would not come. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled. So, what does this mean today for faithful Christians here? And some of you may even consider yourselves to be good Lutherans. Let me share one description from the letter of James, the second chapter. I quote, 
my brothers and sisters, do you think your acts of favoritism really cause you to believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing fine clothes and say, oh, have a seat here, please, while you say to the one who is poor, well, stand there or, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters. Has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom of God that he has promised to all those who love him? You do well if you really fulfill the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for it all. So speak and so act as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. So, what does this mean for us as Christians? We are to show mercy. We are to proclaim Jesus crucified for our sins. We are to proclaim that Christ was raised from the, the grave so that we too have victory over the grave. We are to live in faith, knowing that our Lord will return to judge both the living and the dead. In other words, to see how we've done at living out that song that Miles sang. We are to share with all people without favoritism and without showing partiality to both the good and the bad. Like Bob and Elizabeth Dole, we are to not think one person is better than or above the other. As it also says in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Well, if you ask me about other stories about Chuck Galloway, you'll find out that he was no angel. Neither am I. But he and his family did help a Nebraska congregation grow in faith during a single year of internship. That congregation's growth in discipleship began the day Chuck first walked into that office, and they all thought he was a drifter. When the Galloways left a year later to return to seminary at Dubuque, Iowa, the eyes of the tear-filled members of that Lutheran congregation sent them to Dubuque with a parting gift, a brand new washer and dryer. They wanted to show their gratitude for all they had learned from the Galloways. So let me ask you, where have you recently seen gratitude? As you personally ponder that question, I ask you to either watch this video or, uh, or you can read about the, 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 um, it in, in the bulletin insert. This is from our stewardship committee. And as a teacher and teaching during this pan pandemic, I have had so many parents and community members just come up to me and tell me how grateful they are to have the school open, to have teachers who are committed to teaching 
students um, during this period of time. And to hear that really, really helps because it has been very difficult and it really, really helps just each day to know that I have my community members support as well as all of my parents um, that I work with and even parents of students that I don't work with but I've had their students in the past or never had their students they're just so kind and share that gratitude with me and I just I, I want to give it back thank you so much for your support gratitude 2020 the year of uncertainties, unrest, and the pandemic. St. Matthew's being in lockdown for a few months was not what I ever expected in my lifetime, but thanks to Pastor and the staff helping put together church services online was wonderful, but still not quite the same as being in church. But then the idea was to have communion service in the parking lot. That was so exciting. I could see my church family smiling faces with deepest gratitude. We are back. And even now with offering communion to people once a month in the parking lot or going to their homes, we have been trying to reach everyone and I feel we are. And I know the members have been very, very grateful. Thanks be to God. Where have I seen gratitude, especially during this time of pandemic because I've had the privilege of serving communion, whether it be in a modified way in the sanctuary or with our drive through communion services. The gratitude that I've seen in people's eyes and with what they've said has just been a blessing to be a pastor. They are great, very grateful to receive the Lord's body and blood. I believe in God the Father, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and buried. He descended into death. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, fill your church with the spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all the children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Work through the ministry of your people 
especially LRI Lutheran Parish, all disciples and congregations throughout the ELCA, and the word, world. Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, Bishop Jeff Clements, Bureau County Food Pantry, Second Story, Another Child Foundation, and the Lutheran World Relief. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated, restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Bless the newly baptized, especially Lane Christopher. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of dip diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill or who need prayer, especially Jim, Steve, Peter, Shirley, Diane, Judy, Doris, Shirley, Alice, Jane, George, Margaret, Marion, Paul, Elizabeth, Fran, Ann, Porter, Terry, Marilyn, Mary, Nathan, Dana, Beth, Deborah, John, Tim, Julie, Lloyd, Nancy, Joy, Mona, Rod, Deb, Joanne, Samantha, Tricia, Deb, Jessica, Scott, Mary, Angelica, Lori, Sally, Sandy, Braden, Kendall, Karen, Ruth, Jeff, Gary, Caprice, Wilfred, Lisa, and all victims of disasters and violence and those impacted by our pandemic. And strengthen doctors and medical care workers and caretakers who see to everyone's needs. Gracious host, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray, pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community. Gracious host, do we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet? Comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Comfort the grieving families of Bill, Thomas, and those who have lost loved ones and friends from the COVID-19 pandemic. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with the sacrament of Holy Communion. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name in prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. So come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Um, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare to receive communion.
Spirit waits for you, O living Word. Bless your own word of truth, dear Lord, to me. As when you bless the bread by Shall our bondage cease, our fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all in all. You are the bread of life, dear Lord. Oh.